Apples can be another source of uh, exploitation by the supermarkets. A very obvious one, where we buy uh, apples by the kilo, but we use them by the each. So if you buy a big apple, you're going to get fewer eaches. Let's just see. A little one? It's not even that little, actually. Is 125 grams, 126. This one is 171. This one's 181. And this big, beautiful looking apple is 304. So when you buy apples, you're only going to get 3.3 big apples per kilogram. However, if you choose a smaller one, uh, that one there, you're going to get 8.8 .8 apples. Sorry, 8 apples per kilo. Slightly under, in fact. We'll call it 8. So when you go to choose an apple to have a little chomp, that apple is perfectly good size. So you're paying, hitting on to two and a half times, around two and a half times more for the bigger apple because you're using it, using so much more than you need to. So the breeders are trying to produce big apples. So when you're in the supermarket and you work out that you need like 14 apples or seven apples a week or something, if you're choosing big ones, you're going to pay more, a lot more, a lot more. Choose the little guys. Pay less is just as good for you because your bodily will be only able to absorb so much goodness. Or buy the big ones and share them around your family, maybe a quarter each. Don't get ripped by people making big apples. The same goes to bananas. There's a bunch of not too bad sized bananas, but you can get big ones that are uh, almost half as long again than these. And you're probably paying for them by the kilo again. You will be paying for them by the kilo, but you use them by the each. And also, I'm pretty sure as um, they get bigger, the skin will get thicker and heavier as well too. So as you buy a big one, you're buying more skin and less banana. Let's just see what the ratio is between the banana inside one of these sort of medium to large bananas, skin versus fruit. I ate that banana, it was very nice. Very banana -y. The banana weighed 180 grams, 34% is skin, 66% was fruit. I haven't got a bigger one to check whether the skin gets bigger percentage or smaller. It's hard to say. It could get skin, could get smaller as the internal volume gets bigger. Uh, however, a big fruit, again, we want it by the each, we eat it by the each, but you buy by the kilo. Choose smaller ones, get more fruit uh, for your dollar. Okay, toothpaste is a, another item of just using too much, which you use a couple of times a day all over the year, and you can burn up money for no reason. Let's just see how much toothpaste is in this 120 gram tube. I'm going to squirt out the whole lot. So, we got a strip, pretty even, but hard to do, but we got uh, 1.4 metres, 1400 millimetres. The tube is pretty empty, very empty. My toothbrush, let's just see um, how 
wide my toothbrush is. It's uh, thirty millimeters, three centimeters, thirty millimeters. The toothbrush is 30 millimeters long. The tube length of paste is 1400 millimeters. So we'll get 46 um, applications. Uh, but if you only did half a brush length, you get 93 of them. And a third of a brush length, you get 440. Now I'm presuming you don't need as much toothpaste as you think you do on a brush if you're doing it regularly. Certainly I find most of it spat out and gone down so number of days, if you brush twice daily, the number of days that you're using it, it's only 23 days with a full brush. Half a brush, you'll get 46 days. And a third of a brush, you'll get um, over two months worth, 70 days. So that's um, a hell of a good saving just by limiting the amount of paste you put on a brush. Now another thing here is the diameter of that tube. It's a long been a thing by people that the toothpaste companies um, get you to use way more paste because they simply make the orifice wider. In fact, oh, I've just got paste all over my all over my measuring thing. You can see how thick that line of paste is. Particularly when it's full, you get this massive amount of paste coming out. And it's so wasteful. And it's so hard to limit it. So using my vernier calipers on this end, which can do internal measurements, I'll be able to measure that hole. And that's 7.5 millimeters. That is a big hole, massively excessive. It doesn't need to be that big. So this technique of cutting down the length is a good solution to massive amount of this going on and don't diminish the number of tubes that you'll buy in a year there's no need to spend money excessively on toothpaste spend it on beer or something useful and i didn't waste the toothpaste i put it in this container scraped it up hardly lost anything so the makers of this honey are Tacky, which is a good honey. I've chosen it to put it in the squeeze bottle. That's nice. However, I gave up trying to get this last bit out. My wife was stabbing at it with a knife. That could be a fifth of the whole thing of honey. And it will not move down. Maybe if you put it in boiling water, it might soften up. I have a suspicion many would throw it out at this stage. Whoops. So the solution again, or well not again, this is, is you simply, with a sharp knife, serrated knife, maybe you cut it here. Just cut it all the way through. And then put some cling film over the top so you can easily get in and get that last bit of honey. That is a massive amount of waste um, if you don't recover all that honey in there. Honey is so expensive now. Another wasteful item is the amount left in the bottom of bottles like this. These are 
creams that I use to put on my feet while I'm putting shoes and boots on here. These ones, which stand outlet down, drain to the bottom. These ones don't. They leave a large portion in the bottom. The pump just sucks the thick cream out of the middle and leaves a lot in the bottom. Let's just see. So the thing is 100 mil high and there's about 30 millimeters left in the bottom. So that's about 30% wastage left in the bottom here. So what I normally do is cut them off and just put a bit of clear foam over the top and just put my finger in there to get the rest of it out. That's a lot of waste. If you can't be bothered with that, well, well, it's wasteful and you, you just have to put up with paying more and all of this gunk ends up in a landfill. Simply sealed up and I can use it to the last drop. Again, these are items if you use them every day all year long. If you throw out 20 or 30 percent of things, then well, you're never going to get it back again, and that's just money down the drain. Has somebody designed that container for you to waste all of that to end up buying more packages per year? I think the answer to that is yes. Only buy sauces and mayonnaises, etc., in a jar where you can use a spoon to get down to the bottom to get every last bit out. They say these squeeze bottles will run to the bottom. You have real trouble when they get down there, and there's a lot of stuff in there that you can't get out. So, open top jars, use a spoon, you'll get everything can save you up to 10, 20% sometimes, depending on the product. Leftover soap bits can be a waste. If you try to squeeze them together, it usually is difficult and doesn't work and they fall apart again. I'm gonna try zipping it in the microwave. It'll work quite well. It's 10 seconds in the microwave. And it's quite solid. I wrapped it in cling film and I'm gonna microwave it for five seconds and then leave it to cool in the packet. And here it is, once it's cooled down. Uh, Reconstituted soap bits that won't fall apart when you wash it. How much longer will that give you? A week? You just save some money. This bread costs about $2. This one costs about $4. It's the same size loaf of bread. This one's got a better brand. And the, there's the maths on doing that. For our little family, three loaves a week. It's 156 loaves a year. 312 versus 624. Buy the cheaper one. You're not there to support that corporation. Another small issue is these end pieces on your sliced bread. Do you eat them or do you throw them out? So many people throw them out. It's good bread. Just eat it. It's got to amount to um, 5 to 10% of the loaf of bread. It's actually quite nice. Makes nice toast. I weighed the end versus the middle. The middle is 33, the end is 35. So it's exactly the same weight, more or less, as the other bits. So eat the end bits. Don't waste them.
Thirst can be a driver for spending money. This is a 600ml bottle of cola. And this is a 300ml bottle of cola. One's twice the size of the other. And interestingly, or non-interestingly, this one's twice the price of that one. But how much do you need, actually? That's quite a lot of drink, 300ml? To quench your thirst, that'll easily quench your thirst. The driver in the stores is to buy the bigger one. They'll say, you'll say, well, it's the same price per litre, uh, so why not? Um, yeah, but if you don't need that much, buy that much. Get a $2 gold coin back in your pocket. In New Zealand, we have what are called $2 shops. They're not much $2 anymore, but they're still very well priced. Uh, merchandising of all sorts, um, hardware, toys, everything. Uh, so I needed some hinges for a basic job, nothing fussy. This one from that shop was four fifty, dollars and five fifty dollars for the bigger ones. I checked them out at a big box uh, hardware store. They were eight dollars, but for one, this was five dollars for two, so that's five dollars versus sixteen dollars for two hinges. And this is all I need. Maybe the their ones are fancier or stainless or something, but all I need is a hinge.